CRT monitor and uh, actually between CRT TVs and CRT monitors I prefer the monitors because there's more copper in them for some reason I don't know why and usually that gauss cord that goes around the tube is copper and not aluminum. Here lately a lot of the CRT TVs are coming up with uh, aluminum gauss wires. Uh, the, the aluminum wires are not without value. They have aluminum value but you have to strip that uh, insulation off of them which is not that big of a problem. But I'm going to go over this thing from start to finish. And I've noticed there's a couple of scrappers, and I might have mentioned this before, if I have, I apologize. But they're saying that these things are dangerous. And kind of like with the microwaves, I think it's much to do about nothing. Uh, these CRTs are only dangerous if you break that tube and inhale that lid or whatever it is that's inside them things. And actually, I can break the tube and it's still not going to be a danger because I'm not fool enough to try and inhale that stuff. But I'm not, uh, I learned not to break the tubes a long time ago. You don't have to break the tubes. Uh, the only way you break the tubes is you go in there with a damn hammer and start beating stuff all the crap and everything you you know or go, use a hammer to open the cabinet you know sitting there beating it you gonna crack that tube uh, but it's not necessary if you got the right tools and everything if I sound funny it's cause I got my teeth in I don't know why I put my teeth in this morning see but they're in my sister-in-law says I look better without my teeth. I don't know. What did I put them in for? Oh, I was eating something. I needed my teeth. I couldn't, couldn't chew it. I was eating some trail mix. Anyhow, we're going to do this thing from start to finish. And uh, see what we get. Well, I'm starting over again. I've been going about 10 minutes on this damn monitor thinking I was recording and I, I, didn't, I didn't have the damn video on. So anyway, let me kind of show you what I got to on it. Gosh dang it, that pisses me off no end. No end. Anyway. First thing I did was cut the dang cord. Damn it, that pisses me off. Then I unscrewed all the screws around this thing, took the back off. And I guess I was telling you that CRT monitors and the CRT TVs. They're pretty much the same, except the monitor has more stuff in it. And anybody that listens to these other guys about these things being dangerous, the only thing dangerous is if you bust this tube and inhale the dust. 
I'm not sure what it is. I think scrap vulture called it some kind of lid or something. But uh, then the uh, next thing I did on here was cut. The next thing I did was cut the gauss wire, and the gauss wire it goes around the tube like this. And most time on these monitors, this gauss wire is copper. Sometimes on the TVs it's copper, and sometimes it's aluminum. And of course, the aluminum has a little bit of value. But at any rate, that's when I realized I wasn't recording nothing. Damn it, that really, really ticks me off sitting here and talk to myself, thinking I'm talking about video. There's some screws there, it is. Uh, Talking about all these getting me a better pair of uh, nippers. Cause about all of mine have got gaps in them where I've cut into live wires and shorted out, and that will that will. Uh, Burn some gaps in your uh, the jaws of your uh, your clippers. Trying to get all these wires loose. Got that got them. Now I gotta sit down again. Oh crap! This is where some scrappers make a mistake. They don't take all this stuff off. They go down here and hit it with a hammer and crack the tube to get this here yoke off. And it's not necessary. Because you can see all that copper in there and in here. That's where the copper's at. But also look around there at the copper. And there's copper. Now, as you can see, I haven't cracked that tube. It wasn't necessary to crack that tube. And uh, uh, that's where the problem is. When you crack this tube, it, it will release a little bit of that lead. And then you got to breathe it for it to harm you. I don't know if getting it on your skin harms you or not. I I don't have a clue. I'm an expert in some stuff. Some stuff I know a little bit about, but not enough to say I'm an expert like what's in that tube. I know there's something in there they say that's hazardous. I don't know. Uh, it's a... Uh, not a problem for me because I let's see now I got to get this board out. I'm gonna try to break that. I 
will pull some stuff off of this board the, the extruded heat sinks this piece of copper uh, this transformer and the wires the board itself is going to go in my green board stuff and that it will bring 10 cents a pound I can leave some of that stuff on there but the problem is the stuff that I leave on there is worth more than 10 cents a pound there's two transformers on there and one, two, three pieces of aluminum and some uh, some IC chips, which I'll take off. But that's totally crap now. Uh, I used I used to get the screws, pull the screws out of this thing for the weight, but see there, but I don't do that anymore, I leave that in tight, it's easier to handle and throw away, but anyway, that is scrapping the monitor, now there's a little, a little uh, green board in here, I will take this stuff loose, And get that. I don't know if they would take that like that, but I will pull the wires off of that. But at any rate, that's how you break down a CRT monitor. I want to do, I've looked at a billing over here, I got that on video, I was going to make a, do a video on it, put it on YouTube, but I'm not finished with it, but uh, I got in my head to open this business and start buying scrap myself from other scrappers, but not not just the shred stuff, you know. I mean, I'm talking about buying uh, uh, stuff that can be repurposed or resold and not scrap. Of course, I would sell some scrap along too if I got it. But, uh, you know, like, I see so much stuff that gets stuck. And if I offered, like, if, if a scrapper today, if he picks up a microwave and all he's going to do is scrap it he ain't even going to get a dollar for that thing whereas he could bring it to me and I would give him two dollars this is just examples or a TV 
where he see like flat screen TVs and stuff, he knew them, and a lot of them go around and say they ain't got no value. Well, he could bring it to me, and I'd give him a dollar, maybe two. Uh, but stuff like that, vacuum cleaners, uh, where he's going to cut, a lot of them are just cut the cord and leave the rest sitting. And he, if he brought it to me, or the scrapper, he or she brought it to me intact, don't be cutting the damn cord or nothing and bring it to me. I would give him like a buck and a half for it. Whereas on a vacuum, I would take that vacuum cleaner test it, see if it runs, clean it, if it runs, clean it up, and resell it. If it doesn't run, then I would scrap it. But nine times out of ten, it's going to run. The ones I wind up having to scrap, I ain't going to get my money back on it, but the ones I, that do run, I would get my money plus ten or 15 times more. Uh, it, but there's a lot of things that runs like that. Like they'll take motors. I would buy motors. I would give them. I would give them more for the motor than they could get. Now when I say motors, I'm talking about the motors. It's not vacuum cleaning motors or anything like that. I'm talking about like these bench motors for bench top grinders and stuff like that. Because I was getting them from Swinger Brothers a lot that people brought in and sold for scrap. And they run. They're, they're good motors. But that's what I'm talking about, buying stuff like that to resell. Where I could afford to pay more for it. In other words, if they brought me something in that I could resell, but they could only get like five or seven or eight cents a pound for it, I would give them maybe 20 cents a pound, you know, so that they would be inclined to bring it to me. And it wouldn't take long for me to get the word out that I'm buying stuff like that. And that's what's in my mind. Uh, I've been trying to research this stuff. I could... Start this in the building. It's a brand new building. It's never been used. Uh, there's a couple of things that's not finished on it. Like it's, there's an upstairs to it, and there's no steps going up to that door upstairs. But the stairs inside that you can go upstairs. And then there's a roll-up door on both ends. You can drive a damn semi through there. That's how big the doors are. And there's six acres of land with it that I could use. So, uh, I know also there's an advantage to being a dealer because then when the scrap you do come up with in quantity, you're going to get a higher price for it. You're going to get a premium price uh, for it. But all this is going on in my head. I'm old. I may not have tomorrow. I don't know. There's people I know that dies that's not as old as me. There's some older than me. So I don't have the promise of tomorrow. I would hate to get into that and then croak in two weeks and leave a mess for my daughter to clean up. Uh, but you know, I was in business for myself for 40 years. And at some points in some of those businesses, I had a, I wasn't a big businessman, you know, or anything like that, but I, there was a couple of businesses I had like 10 or 12 employees. And I know if I was to do this business, being as old as I am, I'm going to have to have 
probably two employees pretty much right off the bat. But to me, there's a lot of satisfaction in having a business and meeting a payroll every week for somebody working for you. And, you know, the satisfaction to me was knowing that I was helping this employee support their family or their self, you know. And, and I miss that. I miss that terrible. I used to get up real early in the mornings. And... Uh, I would be at work to the shop five o'clock, getting everything running, you know, getting the lights on, turning the compressors on, uh, working on any of the machines that maybe needed tuning up or something was wrong and had to fix them, stuff like that, uh, or building a new cutting table or cutting out fabric and stuff for these van seats we were manufacturing, stuff like that. There was so much satisfaction in that, and I miss that so much. I would just love, I would love to do that again. I just don't know if I'm able. Uh, I don't know whether to go for it or not. I want to. I've already looked at the building and, you know, and talked to them about the lease and everything. I'm going to put out the video on that, but not right now. I ain't got it all ready. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to do it once I make up my mind one way or the other. But that's what's in my mind, buying all this stuff. In other words, if somebody had a bunch of copper pipe or tubing that they was going to take to the scrapyard and get whatever it's paying now, so much pound. If it's good, reusable copper tubing, and I've seen a lot just coils of copper tubing going in for scrap. I would buy that from them and maybe give them a big premium price for bringing it to me that they can't get at the scrapyard. And there again, that would make incline them to, to come to me to buy it, to sell that. And then I would turn around and resell that, you know, word would get around to plumbers and stuff that I had the stuff that they could get cheaper than they can get it at Lowe's or somewhere. And that's my thoughts on it. But I see so much stuff going uh, to the scrapyard. I see some of these scrappers I watch on YouTube uh, throws perfectly resellable stuff and uh, I, I say a scrapping pallet man comes to mind. I ain't picking on you Paul I'm just saying you know I see you throw some stuff away that I would love to have to resell and them, them ceiling tiles them, them old antique ceiling tiles and architectural stuff that when, when you picked them up I said oh lord that's going to go in the scrapyard and sure enough you go to scrap her and I want you giving that stuff a sling over there in the scrap pile. Uh, but stuff like that, I would get, if, 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 there's a good example. If Paul was around me and he knew that I would buy stuff like that at probably twice the price, uh, he would bring it to me. It, it would make dollar cents to him, you know, to do that. So that's my thought. I think I got a good idea. Uh, I have to say, every business I ever started, I only had one that fell flat on its face and it was going like gangbusters and that was in Virginia. And, uh, it didn't go down. The reason it went down was because of some stupid ass stuff I was doing. I won't elaborate on it, but it involved my wife and somebody else's wife. And 
I'll just let it go at that. That was big. That was one of the biggest mistakes I ever made in my life. Lord have mercy. That was in 70, <laughs> 1978. I was manufacturing. Oh boy, I ain't going there anyway. That's my idea about this business, and I just can't make up my mind. I, I got to, I got to do it. I got another four or five days before I have to tell the real estate company yeah or nay. They at first wanted me to take a take a five year lease on it, but. I wouldn't do that. I'd do a two-year lease, but I wouldn't do no five-year lease. What they'd really like is a 10-year lease. Hell, I'll be pushing the hell out of 90 by then. Anyway, that's my thoughts on that. That's what's going on in my mind. So anybody got any comments, I'd like to listen to them, uh, but they won't sway me one way or the other, but I would like to know what other people think. Uh, I would love to be back in a business. Love to be back in a business. There's a lot of satisfaction, especially if you got employees and they're depending on you. Anyway. What else was I going to say? I done forgot. The damn Katie did is really chirping again. I'll be glad when they get done. I, I don't know if this is the time when they start molting or whatever you call it, or shedding that shell of a skin. But this time of year, they, they are raising cane. And with my new hearing age, oh, uh, <laughs> I can hear them good, you know, even in my bad, this is my bad, real bad, my, both my ears are bad, but this one, this is the one I had surgery on in 1982. But that's, that little hearing aid right there is, retail is $3,500. And it's a behind the ear one. Uh, name of them are Pronax, which they're, I think they're made in Sweden or Switzerland or somewhere like that. But, but I, it, this is my bad ear, and I can even hear in that ear now. And, uh, they're they're good. I can hear good. Um, and this one on here, this same thing. $3,500 is, you might, you might see around seven grand on my ears, hanging on my ears. And if I happen, I've never lost one. I broke some, but I've never lost one. They say if I lose these through the VA, they'll replace them one time. Now in two or three years, they'll replace them anyway because they, they like to update them to a newer model. But I'm so sure glad I went to VA. I can hear so good, much better. Okay. Got to get this video up. Oh, by the way. Did you notice uh, Chicago Bulls hat? I found this in the dumpster. It's brand new. I like the hat, but I, the stickers are still on it. My head's bald except back there. You can still see I ain't got that cut. I got to get my daughter and my grandson cut that. But this hat has the stickers on it. It also has a price tag on it. $31.99. And it's got it's got the years that they were NBA champions right there, you know. I think it's, what, six years? 91, 92, 93, 96, 97, 98. 
I think I might just clean this up real good and put it in my yard sale. Also, that my Florida Gators hat probably got a hefty price on And it's practically brand new. Who's that, Joseph? My grandson fixing to go. Uh, he's turned his notice in at, um, at Walmart. Two week notice. They got this policy about, they got him doing a customer service manager's job. And, but he, he's only 19. And they have this policy that he, they, uh, an employee has to be 21 to be a customer service manager. But they got him doing that job without the pay. And he makes, I think he makes $12 an hour at Walmart. Well, there's so much work put on him and everything, and, and if he was getting the benefits of doing that job, it'd be different. But he, he said he don't want to do that anymore unless they could get, actually promote him to CSM and give him that pay raise. He would stay, but he turned in his two-week notice. And uh, the, the manager actually hadn't turned in his, his uh thing he gave him, he gave him that he's quitting in two weeks because they keep hoping he'll change his mind. They really like him. And he took, he got a job at a veterinarian's office as a, like a receptionist for only $9.50 an hour. So he's actually taking a pay cut. So I don't know, I got mixed feelings. I think he, personally, my own self, I think he ought to hang tough and take the BS. And when he hits 21, he, he'd be a shoe-in for getting that promotion. But I don't know. I don't know, but he, uh, they're really... Uh, with my, I'm not saying this because it's my grandson, but he's one of those people that don't come along often as far as an employee. Uh, they're going to lose. They're going to lose a good one. Uh, if they promoted him to what he was supposed to be, he would actually be and his mama's been there for four years. She does good. And she's been offered manager's jobs, but she, she won't take them. She don't want them. And, uh, but if they promoted him, he would actually be over her. I don't know how well that would work. Anyway, they're going to lose a good employee. And I know he'll like being over at that veterinarian. He loves animals, cats and dogs, he's crazy about them. Uh, he's got, he's got two. Uh, one named Ash and another named Diamond. And, uh, then my daughter's got one cat. And two dogs. They say the dogs are mine. I didn't bring any of those animals in the house. I brought, the only thing I do is I love my two dogs. And they sleep with me. And everybody, they're your dog. No hell they ain't. I didn't bring them in. Well, you, you need to uh, cut loose some money and get them fixed. No hell I won't. They're not mine. You know, they, that's what I say. If you bring cat animals in the house for pets and stuff, you better damn well be able to take care of them. But anyway, that's the skinny on what's going on. 
I'll be putting that video up probably in the next four or five days with my decision. I want to do it so bad. Uh, and I love that place. Uh, I love it because there's lots of space with that five acres of land out there. It's fenced in with, with eight foot chain link. Bob wire and razor wire on top. Uh, and a good location. Good location. Easy to find. But it bothers me that I have to be doing it on somebody else's dam. We're talking maybe just, just to get started, maybe. Maybe twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars. Cause they're gonna have to buy a truck. And I've already looked at some uh, machines over there. Another place that went out of business. Uh, that's pertaining to. There's a crusher thing that crushes metal and it's aluminum pieces and cans. Uh, but it's twenty-five, thirty grand. I wouldn't even think twice about it, I'd do it. This old, this old shit ain't, ain't getting on. Boy, Virginia come along and say, I'll give you one wish. How much money you want? I don't want no money, just give me about 20 or 30 years of my youth back. I'll take that over money anytime. Cause I can always make money.